there you see Bravo is 13 years older than Berto. Berto had nearly a nine-year layoff. We will talk about that momentarily. Berto with the half-inch height advantage, the arm length, which is measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Berto has a half-inch advantage there. And both fighters making the 147-pound limit. Rules of the bout now with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Andre Berto, the Berto Bravo fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non-title, using the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. In case it comes caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell on any round, including the 10th and final round. Friend. All right, Harold, the fighters are already in the ring, so let's send it into ring announcer Dave Diamante with official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Hammerstein Ballroom at the Manhattan Center in beautiful New York City for an evening of world-class boxing. Tonight's event brought to you by Debella Entertainment and Dash Debella Promotions. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. Chairman in attendance, Mr. Ron Scott Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, our first bout of the evening scheduled for 10 rounds in the welterweight division. Your judges ringside, Billy Costello, Steve Epstein, and Alan Rubenstein. Ito. Ito. Your referee for this contest, Joe Cusano. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the red trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at already 146 and one half pounds. He has a professional record of 23 wins, 12 defeats, three draws, and 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Tucson, Arizona. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Norberto El Gajito Bravo. Bravo. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He wears the black and red shorts. He tipped the scales at 145 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign with a professional record of 16 wins, no defeats, and 14 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2004 Olympian from Winter Haven, Florida, Andre Berto. Berto. Andre. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the instructions in the dressing room. We're fighting under the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. I want you to keep the bout clean, nice clean breaks. Belt line's fine. Everything above here is legal. We do not go below this line. I'm going to get to see you fight, not me referee. So we're going to be a good, clean, professional fight. Touch him up now, and the bell rings come out fighting. Guys. His promoter, Lou DiBella, says that Berto's the first fighter when he calls for opponents. The response is, get the you-know-what out of here. <laughs> Norberto Bravo is here. The question is, for how long? Yeah, you heard Dave Diamante uh, say his nickname there, El Gilito, which translates into the fighting rooster. Well, he, he told us that he is prepared to fight to the death. We will see uh, what happens tonight. The first of a scheduled 10 round walked away bout between Andre Berto and Nito Bravo. And right away you see the poise and the quickness of Berto. And you know, Berto seemed like he heard Bravo with a, with a jab and uh, that's a telling blow to be hurt by a jab straight away. And it definitely looks cold in there, Bravo. Both boxes look a bit cold. Berto, 23 years old. He represented Haiti on the 2004 Olympic team. Tried to qualify for the U.S., got disqualified for some roughhousing tactics. And to realize he had dual citizenship, both his parents are from Haiti. Had over 200 amateur fights. See, Berto's doing the right thing right now, starting everything off with a jab, get his opponent worried about that jab right now, and then everything follows from that. 
Both his parents might be from Haiti, but he fights as though they're both from the Matrix. I mean, this guy is going at, a, at a, another speed than most fighters that you see. And Bravo sits down on a short, crisp left hook from Andre Berto. And let me tell you, Berto set that up with a jab. The guy saw the jab was coming, he put his right hand out, and Berto came right around with a left hook. We haven't even seen his uppercut, which is the punch he features. Very few fight fighters feature it. Now, Bravo's never seen a boxer like Berto, and he's in for a big surprise tonight. Another big left hook after a right uppercut. Bravo down for the second time in the first round. Berto told us he fashions himself as a boxer puncher with all this power. Berto's looking for the uppercut right now. The three knockdown rule is in effect, so if Nito Bravo goes down one more time, fight over right now. Referee Joe Cusano waving it off. Andre Berto improves to 17 and 0 with 15 knockouts gets his 13th straight victory by knockout and his seventh knockout in the first round guys bravo's a last minute replacement and 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 clearly he's the opponent and berto's expected to win but bravo is a guy who can handle himself and he's tough and berto just did that to him in the first round yeah i mean you can be tough but if you haven't seen your opponent and you only have an A ga game and you haven't figured out a B game, just in case you get hurt, then you're in problems in there. For the record, his B game was to box, but <laughs> I guess it didn't work out. Well, Andre Berto has never fought past the sixth round. He did it in his last fight against Miguel Figueroa. Fought to the sixth round. This one a first round knockout. And, and one of the things that, that his camp said is that the reason why they wanted to get Ben Tacky in there is because they, they knew Tacky would test him. They need to see what happens to their fighter once he gets past the sixth or seventh and maybe into the later rounds of the fight. Right. He, he looks like against this level opponent a combination of Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. The question is how much, you know, Evander Holyfield and Rocky Marciano does he have in him? And you find that out against the tougher guys. And here's that first knockdown. He came with a jab, and then he just came across with a hook. Put him down. Had no defense for that punch. Here's the second knockdown, basically an accumulation of punches. And, you know, the power just really overcame that flurry right there. Here's another look at the second knockdown, uh, Lennox. I like the, what about the patience of him? Well, he showed, good, he showed good patience in that fight. You know, there's nothing we can really say that he did bad. He, you know, he doesn't get paid for overtime. Best thing to do is go out there and, you know, dispense of your opponent in a, in a, in a great fashion, and that's what he did. Andre Berto doing what you're supposed to do. And now let's send it in to Dave Diamante. With the Ladies and gentlemen, goal. referee Joe Cusano calls a halt to this contest. The time, 2 minutes, 28 seconds of round number one. The winner by TKO and still undefeated, Andre Berto. So Andre Berto improves to 17 and 0. Gets his 15th knockout of his career, making short work of Nito Bravo. Here are the final punch stat numbers. What many numbers thrown here? Berto landing 28, throwing just 54, landing at a 50 connect rate and Bravo you see just 15 punches thrown never even looked on balance and the power punches that's all Berto he did I mean he did set things up Lennox as you mentioned with the jab but once he started firing with the hooks in that uppercut his favorite it was lights out for Bravo
definitely some, it was just pure power in there. And each punch, he has power in his hands. And that's what he did today, just show it. The, the biggest problem with Berto is going to be how do you pace this thing? You know, how do you not elevate his level of uh, opposition very quickly? So Andre Berto gets the night off on fire here at the Hammerstein Ballroom with a first-round knockout over Nito Bravo.